This is Andy Perrault off the Boxing Social in association with Betfred. I'm delighted to be joined by Dean White here in New York. Dean, of all places. Firstly, how are you? But how have you ended up out here? I'm good, you know, all good, man. I'm, I'm a Phileas Fogg, travelling around the world in uh, maybe 14, 15 days, not 70 or whatever. It was 90 days, wasn't it, Phileas Fogg? Around the world in 90 days, yeah. So um, it's all good, man. We come out here, we come to, uh, you know, watch the, the fight. I've got some meetings out here as well um, tonight, one of them. And uh, yeah, just kind of connecting some dots, you know. I'm always working, always grafting. So I've got some good friends in some good places. So we're just coming to talk about potentially doing a show in America, maybe next year. So um, I'm going to talk to a couple other promoters. But yeah, man, God is good, man. We're, we're, you know, we're, we're just planning and plotting. I've got a next show next year in uh, February. So that's going to be in the UK. And then we're just planning for maybe next year sometime, looking at potentially America is something. We've got to speak it into existence and connect the dots and see where we can put the puzzles together in, into this thing and see where it goes. Before we do come on to the reason we're here in New York and the fight ahead tomorrow night, just to reflect on your past show, how did it all go? It went amazing, you know, thank you for all the people that turned up, the fighters that shot, fought on the card. Um, we had nine fights, nine wins, brilliant show. We had a packed, packed night um, and it was great entertainment, like I said. We had a punching machine, we had a 360 machine, and it was, a, it was a very mixed crowd, you know, which was good. The music was good, the atmosphere was good. Like I said, we're going to deliver on the food. We had lobster, we had jerk chicken, we had fish, uh, we had burgers. We had, listen, it was, it, was, it was a night for entertainment. The boxing played a key part, because it's always going to be the key part, but it was a great night of entertainment, and that's what you want to do. You want to bring great value for money, because sometimes bo the boxing fans don't get that. And on this night, everyone I spoke to was, you know, overwhelmed at how good that the show actually was. Maybe, you know, because it was my first show, people were probably, you know, we, we, we went all out on the production. We had, um, you know, great production. And, um, you know, I'm just looking forward to the, the next show. You know, we're going to be bigger and better and we're going to continue to grow, uh, God willing and stuff like that. So, yeah, man, absolutely great. So, you know, I can't be more thrilled. You know, I look forward to seeing your shows in 2022. But to loop back to the reason we are here in New York, Tifima Lopez, George Cambosos, they've been at it all week. They've been going back and forth. What have you made of their interactions? Do you know what? It's exciting, it's thrilling, it's captivating. And tomorrow night, we're going to have a hell of a hell of a fight. I can see um, Cam Cambosis is, is rearing, chomping at the bits. And do you know what? I was quite surprised because of the Brooklyn boy being Tiafima Lopez, he would have had more support. But obviously the kid from Australia, he had a great network of support. He looked like he was rearing, he was ready. His fans was overwhelming. Their, their, their voices were to the roof. And I think, you know, it's going to be a good fight and longer than it lasts. But, you know, um, I got a feeling, you know, Lopez has got that power. And that's always a get out of jail, that power. I hope that Cambosis doesn't come full with reckless disbandment and walk onto a shot and as an early night. I'd like, you know, they're both undefeated. They've both been around the block. So hopefully they'll both go out there and put on a good show. And, um, you know, be smart, box clever. And not be a silly bugger and just go and start trading with the bigger puncher. Because, you know what happens when you hook with a hooker? You get suckered. And get out of there. That's the second. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dean, obviously, I'm going to ask you about Dillian as well. Um, but just want to get your thoughts and, and if you've had any conversations with Dillian about the entire WBC the arbitration case and his mandatory situation with Tyson Fury, whether or not he will be mandated anytime soon. Um, not really. We didn't. We obviously, we talked about many. We talk all the time. He was. I did a live there, and he was having a go in the live about. I think Craig being in the video <laughs> in the live. But we haven't really spoke about that. We speak about many different things. Um, but you know what? I feel like speaking to some of the team members. Oh, that was a lovely jab. I saw that. <laughs> I saw that. Hey, you got your smoke, man. Um, yeah, that was that was lovely, jubbly still. Um, but basically, you know, the arbitration is a good thing because it's going to be for Dillian and a better interest for Dillian to make sure he gets paid the right purse and he's not kind of mugged off as, you know, what they're trying to do. Because they were trying to do an 80-20 split, which is ludicrous to think. Someone of his stature, they're talking about his former purse. So what, what his purse was? That's got nothing to do with anything. When you've worked your socks off and boxed all of the WBC title people to get to the, the WBC interim world champion, you are deserving of your split what you should get. I think they're saying the split could be as much as um, 45, 55%. He deserved whatever is due to him. So I think going through the arbitration, that will you know, sort out any misgivings, any niggles that might be able to give people uh, the, the latitude and the, uh, and the rooms, the scope to wiggle away and get away with stuff. 
that's not going to happen because I heard them mentioning, oh, let's just make him a voluntary. Because if you're a voluntary, you get peanuts, you know what I mean? So that's not going to never happen. Tyson Fury is now talking about fighting in February. Hopefully, you know, he did say he wanted a bit of time out. Now all of a sudden he wants to rush back in the ring. We'll see. It's only around the corner. In a matter of days, we're in December. So the likelihood is we'll have to see. I know that's why he's trying to force and speed up things. But Dillian deserves his shot. This arbitration is through and done. Everything will be in the right places. All the I's and T's and the dots will be crossed and he will be the deserving man of whatever percentage they see what they deserve he, he should get. And, uh, and that's what we, we'll be hoping for. I saw Eddie jump in an interview with you earlier. What did he have to say about the matter? I imagine you were both talking about it on the camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was, it was the same thing. We're just going over the same thing, just saying the position. And, and this will be a more of a strong hold, a, a better position for him going through the arbitration. And obviously that's stopping them to mandate the fight at the WBC and they're not saying they're not going to but obviously they'd like a conclusion of this arbitration before they can come to a great determined decision so I'm sure anytime soon by um, maybe December um, January hopefully we should hear something and then we can start looking forward to talking about Dillian March and April fighting for the first full WBC world title against the Gypsy King and it's going to be a mega fight it's going to be crazy it's going to be a mouthful in press conference, imagine the press conference, what they're going to be like, the weigh-ins and um, all that kind of stuff is going to be pandemonium. So, look, we just got to see what happens. Whatever God's plan is, it will happen. And um, I'm looking forward to whatever it is, you know what I mean? But we're in, he's in the right path and I feel like it will go the way it's meant to go and it should be in his favour. Dean, does, have, does Dillian have any kind of time frame in mind as to when he would like a, a resolution to come, to come to place? Well, like I said, I didn't really speak to him about it. You know, that kind of... I feel he just... I don't think he's even thinking about it too much like that. Maybe to his guys, the lawyers and the team, he talks about that. But he's not leading on to make it like there's any he's concerned. and Because he's been here a long time dealing with it. So it's not something that is on his mind. There's other things we've been talking about and, you know, dealing with and just trying to be as normal and stuff as possible. But he knows his opportunity is around the corner. That's from one thing we have spoken about. And he's going to grasp that with both hands when that opportunity comes. So it's, 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 it's more that. All right, Dean. I take it I'll see you in Vegas next week as well? Wow, of course we're going to be there. We're going to be everywhere, man. Vegas, LA, Chavante. We're going to be trying. We, 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 we outside, man. We're working. So, you know, I'm trying to work and I've got some meetings all around the place. So while I'm here, we're going to do as much as we can, as much work, as much meetings. And I've got Craig here. So I'm going to talk Craig about. So any of you uh, light heavyweights here, super middleweights, I've got Craig the Spider here looking for that smoke. So we're looking for you suckers, man. We're going to tour America. You're going to beat your ass, some of you suckers. Come out and fight Craig. Well, not me anyway, but I mean yeah. Craig. <laughs> All right, Dean, it's a pleasure as always. Enjoy the rest of your time here in the States. Thank you for speaking to me and Boxing Social. Thanks very much. Thanks.